motorcycle is whatever you want to make it. Turn it on, you can give yourself a real thrill. What's going on guys? This is Carl with Race Red Channel. I just wanted to do a voiceover today since uh, during the ride I had just woken up before this ride and for some reason my voice kind of stayed groggy and uh, it was really dry and hot out there. I don't know whether I got dust in there or something but I was coughing and hacking all day so I just didn't really feel like doing too much narration during that day. It started out really nice. Uh, a lot of this terrain is uh, pretty rugged. It has a lot of um, deadfall. I slid sideways right there trying to get over some deadfall and um, a lot of the rock. I say this in every video when I'm talking about Cambridge, but a lot of the rock is like really, really pulley. It's uh, like softball size and a lot of it really rolls out from under you. So there were a few trees that we cut out of the way like this one. Kind of made it an interesting obstacle. I kind of think that's a cool addition to the trail actually if it was to uh, stay there. Really a perfect day. It was really hot in the lower elevation, but once we got up above uh, 5,500 feet, it was pretty good. Today we are doing a big old loop, and hopefully gonna go see a little cabin, and see if we can find Rush Lake. Never been there. It's accessible through roads. Uh, we maxed out probably around 7,000 feet today. Right here I see some elk running up the hill. It's pretty cool to see some wildlife out there. And once we got up to the top, out of the trees, we could really look down on the valley. and It's definitely some beautiful terrain. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. It's kind of like you got a... Do some social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Dust distancing. Dust distancing. I think that's Hit Mountain over there, or that could be Sturgill Peak, actually. Um, that's the lookout that I was trying to get to. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's one thing about Cambridge is you, you usually climb pretty fast on these trails, so it doesn't take long to really create a really good view of the valley. We stopped at one of these streams and hung out at a waterfall took some pictures, it was pretty cool. There are no shortage of streams uh, here in Cambridge. There's a lot of stream crossings. Wildflowers. Yeah, it's beautiful. There's a trail, that, there's another bicycle trail it looks like that goes up, but. It's still really green this time of year, but um, another three weeks or so, it'll start to really brown up and get not so lush looking. Everything's really thriving this time of year. To appreciate a bridge water is always my nemesis uh, you can't really see the obstacles in the water and I tend to attempt to play it safe when I'm, when I'm trying to cross water I've noticed that every time I stop it's not recording oh. so it must be out of batteries <laughs> And here we hit the uh, four-wheeler trail that leads on up the mountain. I was trying to play it pretty safe today. It was just a nice relaxing ride. I kept the pace, you know, pretty slow and just um, relaxed. And it was just a good, fun, adventurous day. Nothing too crazy. A lot of these snow drifts were a blast to cross. It just adds a whole new element to the trail when there's these big, huge snow drifts. Actually, my favorite snow drift uh, wasn't caught on camera, but it was really, really unique. It was awesome. As we got further up the mountain, up into the higher elevations, we realized there's still a lot of muddy spots and a lot of snow drifts up here. The snow drifts actually add a really good element to the trail, something a, a lot 
different than you would normally deal with. The snow drifts are really something that adds contrast to the trail. The mud is not my favorite. Um, in another week or two, it'll probably be pretty dry all the way through though. But these snow drifts were a lot of fun. And this is Rush Lake. Really a pretty lake. It's really shallow all the way across. And you can see in the distance there, it gets a lot deeper toward the, the middle. Not sure how far across that lake is, but it's really, it's not very huge. Um, there's a lot of, there were just tons of frogs. Mm -hmm. It's like frog haven right there. Really loud with frogs. What is going on out there? So after we got done messing around there, we decided to go on up the trail and uh, the next location that we wanted to hit was the cabin that's up here. I think it's a Buck Park cabin, if I'm not mistaken. It's a really simple setup inside. It's actually something that would be a really good spot to stay just if you wanted to camp overnight. Uh, it's really secluded up in there. There's beautiful meadows around this this whole area. Um, and it's just, it's really pretty terrain up here. And that was the last time anybody ever saw Carl. <laughs> <laughs> just like a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I may have to see if I can. I don't know. I'm going to eat. No, because I didn't eat lunch today. All I had was like some uh, fast food. Yeah. And. I can just fidget with this uh, little latch for days <laughs> before I can figure it out. Did you. Were you able to latch this thing? This outer door? No, I couldn't latch it. Okay. I just pushed it snug. Actually, it just wasn't made right. I was like, wait a minute. Trim guy they hired. Oh no, I almost left my trash. Oh. That's that guy. Too bad you weren't to find out in the player shit house. Oh no. <laughs> and on bushwhacking adventures, you always have to clean up your trash. Can't be leaving trash around. Dirt bikers really don't leave trash out anywhere. We normally take care of the landscape pretty well. So to my surprise, the trail led out into the meadows, which was just beautiful. You really couldn't get much better than this. And up to this point, this whole loop that I had uh, planned out was going perfectly. Um, it was just beautiful all the way, just through and through. Every type of terrain, it was just, everything that we'd hit up to this point was just amazing looking. And everything kind of takes a turn up ahead. And it's not to say that it was a dead adventure, that's for sure. It's one that nobody will forget. Did we almost have to stay up with the, with the bears in the woods? Uh, it's debatable. We almost had to stay, I think. It's good to ride with a group like this that really is a uh, positive and has a positive mindset and just keeps pushing forward when things get a little bit rough and um, my attitude definitely was not the greatest once uh, I waterlogged my bike. There's nothing really worse that you can do to a bike than waterlog it. I pretty much just, in my eyes, I pretty much just ruined my bike. <laughs> So 
So here Jay hit a little mud hole and just completely went over the bars. Luckily he didn't get hurt though. You okay? That was freaking deep. <laughs> oh, shoot. Some of the trail was still that was a good, that barricaded was a with snow a little bit. Okay? We had to work around some of that stuff and it was really no big deal. Nothing too major. A lot of this snow is pretty easy to get over. A lot of diversity in terrain right here. I mean, you just go from beautiful meadows to these snow drifts to mud to these big open areas that are dried out and dusty, big rocky streams like this. I mean, it's just a really unique area. Up to this point, most of the logs were cut, so that was nice too. And here's an intersection showing off with a little, little stoppy action right there. So we keep on heading down and this is where things get a little bit more unknown. And you guys, if you keep up with my videos, you, you've probably seen this one in the past. I, I did this in the winter and I tried to climb this hill, or climb this trail. And uh, this is the one with frozen waterfalls that I was trying to climb and it didn't work out very well for me. In the winter time it was really difficult to find the trail and we're about to find out that even in the summertime, it's difficult to find. We had maps, and we were pretty set up. We had uh, two maps, I had a handsaw, and we had three riders. So our situation was pretty ideal, minus a chainsaw. But you'll find out here that uh, it, it can still get really sketchy, even with a few riders and, and having a good setup. So this was definitely sketchy when I did it solo in the winter time. Um, I didn't think it would be as bad uh, today. It definitely, and, and it wasn't as bad, but the uh, deadfall definitely didn't help things. Definitely made for a good adventure. Like I said, these ones, uh, you definitely, they're not the most enjoyable when you're actually out there riding them at, at certain points get a little bit sketched out, but um, they are the best rides to talk about later. Up in Cambridge, there are a lot of cows roaming around, so um, not only cows, but you have elk, and deer, bears, a lot of wildlife. So what ends up happening is the trails kind of get intermingled with game trails, and when you're in these you know, really uh, thick tree areas, it's really difficult to tell the difference. And definitely in need of some serious bushwhacking. Yeah. Healing elixir in his pipe. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's my elixir. Medicine, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I grind it down later. Is that Here. sage? <laughs> I bless you. So once fatigue sets in, that's that's when it's definitely good to have a good group with you. And uh, fatigue doesn't really completely set in until a little bit later. I should have had some solids. That's really the key for me to uh, do away with fatigue. Is having a little bit of food. just gonna ride on this little section here no problem but uh, there was rock underneath and just this powder on top of the rock so really had zero traction um, and when I fell you could see there my finger got caught between my clutch lever and the hill side so it really smashed my finger good it got me good 
So here we start log hopping. Things are getting pretty gnarly. Uh, this is where I kind of realized that we're going to be, uh, we're definitely going to be tree hopping. We're going to be pushing through the bush. you don't want to carry a chainsaw. But here we are making our way through some of this gnarly rock section and I spot a uh, down tree across the trail and this is where a chainsaw really would have came in handy. This one was pretty huge. So the search begins for an uh, alternate you route. This, you got three logs to hop to get back up there. <coughs> Yeah, this isn't bad. You know, it's not ideal, but... Yeah, yeah, it's better than our other option. And this video is cut down. Um, I've cut this video way, way down. I've, you know, even when I'm looking at this section here, um, I've cut a lot of the boring parts out for you guys, but uh, there was a lot of searching around for different sections, and there's a lot of discussion going on that uh, isn't in this video. There's a lot of negotiating and uh, taking votes, kind of uh, trying to figure out if we want to go back up the trail that we just came down or if we want to keep trying to find alternate routes. Here I help Jim kind of take the alternate route that we chose and um, got his bike up there. Just gave him a little bit of extra horsepower. This is up further up the trail. I was just kind of checking out the lines and seeing if we could get through. That direction. Well, I feel like we're riding in the dark no matter what. I think it's going to be a two-part episode. Two-part episode. Today and tomorrow. <laughs> so what do you think of that? I think we can do this between the three of us. Yeah. I think we can You think it's push and pull the bikes over. That though? I mean, there's a lot of down trees right here, but I think we can get around or over all this stuff. Okay. I, I would just push on until... I know that intersection is about half the distance we've gone down this trail so far. We hit that intersection. It's cleared up to that. So we don't have a, a, okay. a lot of trail left. So this this inter intersection? that intersection right there is where it's cleared. Okay. So we have approximately. We came two thirds of the way down. We only have fifteen hundred feet to go. Oh man, yeah, we'll be through this pretty quick. Yeah. Let's get your bikes over. Let's do it. Let's okay. do it. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna make a decision either way. Quick. You're gonna take up golfing. <laughs> oh, I like it. And here you can see kind of our voting process and, and uh, how we kind of negotiate the trail and kind of see what everybody thinks about it. And uh, it definitely helps. It's help, it really helps me to have a couple other opinions there. That way I'm not just making an executive decision and making the wrong one. So it's good to have other people there to kind of say, well, we could do it this way too. For example, the first line that I wanted to take across this stream probably wasn't the best one. In fact, I know it wasn't the best one. Um, 
Jim found a better spot and we ended up taking that. Tired, dude. I know. Almost there. And at this point, I am super fatigued. Um, this is uh, definitely the point where I really felt like my riding was getting really sloppy. I was just all over the place. Um, basically after doing all that walking, you know, like I said, I cut out a lot of the video, but I did a, a lot of uh, a lot of running around, that's for sure. I try to wear my goggles as much as possible. I know they kind of hinder my ability to see sometimes, but the protection is definitely worth it. Especially when you're in early situations like this, the goggles are just, they will save your eyes at points, so it's definitely well worth it to keep them on. And this is kind of just a section where um, it was just really, really tall log. I'm glad I that, I'm glad I added a little uh, linkage guard underneath my bike so that it really slides on these logs a little bit better. But I was just trying to kind of teeter totter my bike over the top of this log, and it was at the perfect angle to get caught on a log that was underneath there. So it took me a little bit to kind of wedge that out of there. But got over that section and then we were kind of home free uh, on the video you know what was that probably about 10 minutes but in real life uh, I think that was I think this process probably took us a couple hours um, from when we started this trail until here here we are working on the last bike. Everybody's a little bit tired, so. I'm a wee and these guys are giants compared to me, I'm a wee so. Lad. Kind of making fun. I help. <laughs> <laughs> so at this time of the day, I was making all choices that were uh, just basically leveling up my safety. Um, you know, when the day is getting late, um, the choices start, you know, going towards safety a lot more and making sure that nothing happens because you really can't let it hang out um, too much because one little d bad decision could really put you into the the night hours and um, pretty soon we'll see me make one of those choices <laughs> it definitely would have been better just to do what i would have done um, if, had it been you know three hours earlier and that's just right across the stream but i made the choice to hop off the bike and push it and just get soaked. You can definitely tell right here, I start sliding, the bike just goes under. And it just felt like ice all the way through. Um, you can't tell on camera just how deep and how cold and how, and really how far I slid. Um, I slid quite a ways down that rock, basically right where the rock started to get wet. Right there it was just slick moss, so there was no stopping me once I. Right when I hit that, it was just like ice all the way down.
Had I been rolling and just decided to ride across, uh, it would have been cake. Sometimes it just seems like that's the safer route, but a lot of times it's just better to ride the bike. tip it yeah. here we are trying to drain it out um, I got a lot of a lot of river water in this bike right now um, there's no way it was gonna start I was just trying to push all the water out of it I got water um, in the air box up the exhaust pipe everywhere and this is the first time I've ever waterlogged a bike, so this is just Dude, so soul sick. crushing for me. Right because at this right point, it was wet, it was like ice. It just uh, in my mind, I basically just ruined my bike. I mean, I can with, nice. withstand <laughs> anything on the trail, you know, as far as you know, being brutalized or um, crashing and all that stuff. But when it comes to my my machine getting uh, demolished like this, I mean, that's submerging your bike in water is one of the worst things you can do. Hopefully it, it turned out okay. We will see. Here I'm pulling the air filter and the air filter was pretty much soaked with water. I look into the, uh, the air box right there and there's water just coming out of there. Sorry, there you go. Or anything either. I've got toe straps. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Woo, man, now it's wet and cold. Okay. <laughs> oh, guys. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, see you later. That was a fun ride, though. Thanks. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. Now nobody get hurt. Yeah. That would be the next thing. That's why I think we go through the street like, oh fuck, nobody get hurt. Nobody get hurt. It helped out a ton to have them there and. Um, I ride solo a lot. You know, if I did a gigantic loop like we did today, I say gigantic, it was only like 36 miles, I think. But, I mean, it was so slow going through uh, a lot of it that it, it seemed like a lot more miles. But, um, yeah, it, uh, I guess I would have been forced to do it had I gone solo, too. So, I guess I would have been jogging or something. Oh, dear. This is, no, this, this, is, this is not going to live this one down for a while. Pretty brutal. No, this one's pretty brutal. Sink into your foot peg. Okay. Just put it on your waistband. <laughs> you got a thong? It's tied up the top of your thong. <laughs> and I was actually surprised at how well the bike handled being towed like this. I've never been towed, I've never waterlogged a bike. This was a day for first, for sure. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that happened this day, but uh, this was actually working out really good. I was impressed. That situation where I waterlogged the bike just happened so fast, too. I never, I had no inkling that that was gonna happen. Just, I went from standing up to like, on my back in the water in like no time flat, so. Yeah, definitely next time I'm going to keep some momentum and uh, just ride through if I can. Mush! Mush! Definitely a good ride to go with other riders. Um, there are lots of rides where I like going solo, but this was this would have not been a good one. toe strap broke. Actually, the toe strap didn't break. It was my uh, pole handle on the front of my bike that broke. Well, at least it was th this strap that broke. So we retie it around my front fork tube. And we're off again. We did a pretty good distance like this. Uh, really covered some ground pretty good. And then once we stopped here, I figured I'd I'd give the bike a shot 
and hit the magic button just to see what happens. I like your guard. See, you already got your money. And this is what happens. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I think you can carry them home. <laughs> Everybody was ecstatic. It was so crazy to hear this thing run. And then it died. So everybody kind of went back down and then it started again. And we were, we were uh, ready to roll. It was awesome. I was completely shocked that the bike just started up and started running perfect. <laughs> Because in my mind, up to this point, my bike was completely filled with water and probably had crap all on the bottom end and then in the intake. And I mean, in my mind, I was doing a full rebuild. And I guess I'm not completely out of the water yet, so to speak, because I, I definitely uh, might have some water in places it shouldn't be. So I guess only time will tell, but I know for the rest of this ride, the bike just ran perfectly. So after all this adventure, um, we got back to the trucks and I noticed that my battery light had popped on on my truck and, and that was on the way to this location. So I had replaced the alternator just about 5,000 miles ago, so I wasn't too worried about it. Didn't know what could be causing it, I was just, it was just going through my mind like what the heck could be wrong with it. Well it ended up stranding me right as I got, in, got onto the road to go home after this ride. It was a huge ordeal. We called a tow truck. The tow truck basically gave us the, the runaround. Uh, I guess they called a sheriff to go out there and go check it out. So what I ended up doing was loading my bike into somebody else's truck. Then they took me home and then I went out, installed a new battery and a new alternator the next day. Uh, it's actually the day that I'm recording this audio. And it still has a problem. So the issue wasn't the alternator, as far as I can tell. I've got a brand new one in it, and it's still showing that it's draining off the battery. It's got a brand new battery and alternator. So no idea what's going on with it, but I do know that uh, we finally got the truck to my house. That's all that matters to me right now. Um, I can figure out what's going on with it later. And, uh, I won't be making any dirt bike videos until it's fixed, but hopefully it's fixed pretty quick. At this point in the video, I am super stoked to uh, be riding on the trail by my own horsepower <laughs> instead of using somebody else's. I don't know how we would have done it had my bike not started. There were a lot of steep climbs that we had to do and uh, a lot of, we still had to do a lot of miles. And there, I guess there weren't a ton of steep climbs. It was just probably two or three that were really sketchy. So I probably would have had to get off the bike and help push it, but that just wouldn't have been ideal at all. You all right? Oh, good, just knocked the wind out of me. Yeah, we're close. Are we getting close? We're very close, yeah. This is a bushwhacking adventure today. But it all made for a crazy adventure. I got home at about 1.15 a.m. and uh, had to quietly unload the bike and as to not wake the neighbors. Whoa. So just keep going on that. You guys have crappy lights. I know, right? I need some water. Throat's getting worse and worse. I was definitely thankful as I pushed all the cows out of the way um, to be getting back to the trucks at least. And in my mind, at this point, I was home free. Little did I know the adventure wasn't open, wasn't over yet, as my truck would give up on me shortly down the road. Oh man. Maybe crack one. I think I cracked my ego when I fell over in that river. I think I might have to have surgery. How'd it feel riding it? Feel okay? Yeah, felt good. All in all, it was a great adventure and an awesome ride. I can't wait for the next one. So I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.